Hey there, my fellow intellectuals. Dr. Kyle here with another video. It is June 5th, 2024, and it's a very special day because it was on this day exactly one year ago that I became Dr. Kyle and defended my PhD in physics at the University of California, Irvine. And so I thought it would be special for this video, since it's on the year anniversary of defending my PhD, to share with you some important lessons that I've learned in this past year as I transitioned from physics PhD candidate to professional data scientist at the Bay Area Environmental Research Institute as part of the NASA Earth Exchange. So this is not gonna really be about my job per se, but just the lessons that I have taken since going through the process of getting a job and working my job and spending time to sort of reflect on what this past year has meant to me. And it's a special day because I've also written down the lessons on paper, which is something I rarely do for my videos. So just saying, it's kind of a special day. Anyways, let's get right into the first lesson here. First lesson is networking is vital to your career success. And I learned that because I apply to so many jobs on like LinkedIn and Indeed and all these different job boards and different company websites, and it did not go anywhere. Okay, the job market is really difficult these days. And if you're trying to get a job, it is, in my opinion, necessary to leverage the network that you have because, to just simply put, there's so many people who are also applying to jobs as well. And there's a lot of qualified people out there who may apply to the same job you're applying to. And I learned this lesson as, as I was in the process of applying to jobs, my dad was sending me like 30 job applications a day, like a week after I graduated from UC Irvine. But one of those jobs was the position that I currently have now. And it was funny because this organization, the Bay Area Environmental Research Institute, runs an internship called NASA SARP, Student Airborne Research Program, that I was a part of in 2016. And so it was through my connections at SARP that I was able to land a video call with someone who was hiring for this position and finally get an interview about a month later and then a couple weeks after that get the final decision that yes I got the job so I'm not going to get into the whole story about that but you should know that it is really crucial to leverage your network in this day and age if you're looking for a job just my two cents that's just one thing I learned after applying to nearly 200 jobs and getting nothing except what I got after networking so networking important take that to heart Lesson two is that learning never ends and that's not a bad thing. You see, when I finished my PhD, I had done six years for my physics PhD. I had also done four years for my bachelor's degree before that. So I had 10 years of physics education and becoming an expert on this very, very narrow part of supermassive black hole research. And Becoming this expert in this very narrow part of research, it can be, you know, scary to leave and you might just feel compelled to stay with it because you think, well, you know, I'm one of the few people in the world who can make headway in this problem. I should stay. And I really struggled with whether I was going to stay or leave academia. I made a whole video about it that I will link to in the description if you want to watch that. But the thing about a PhD is that enables you the ability to learn quickly. And that's something that I've taken to my new job because this new job, as it's really in earth science research and I really have no earth science experience minus my internship, I've had to learn a lot of things very quickly. And that's the great thing about a PhD is that you really do pick up the ability to just consume and digest and absorb information at rates that can be scary to other people, I think. I'm not so sure. I still have a lot to learn, and that's a thing. Embracing the fact that you have just an infinite amount of things to learn just out there for you to learn, and there's no way you can learn at all. Don't be afraid of that. Just accept it and wholeheartedly find something you want to spend your time learning, and it won't feel like wasted time at all because it's something you really want to do. That's how I see it, at least. So, lesson two, learning never ends. Not a bad thing. Lesson number three is to be kind to 
everyone you meet. And I say this as someone who has had a really, really rough time since my PhD ended, not just from a professional point of view, but from a personal point of view. And people's personal lives are part of who they are. In fact, I would say they are most of what someone is. I don't know if I said that right, but you have the professional you and then you have sort of the personal you, right? And arguably the personal you is the you that's closer to who you really are. I don't know, perhaps, maybe, just putting it out there. And personal life really does have an impact on your entire well-being and can seep into the professional at times. And so I think as someone who's gone through a pretty rough period myself this past year, just the, the little kindness or little kind acts, I should say, that people do when they know you're going through a hard time is just, it's like a force multiplier. Like it, it like the kind act is small, but it actually has this magnifying effect when you are going through a rough time. Just knowing someone can be sympathetic, or empathetic to your, to your problems at that point in time. This is not to say that you should, you know, solve everyone's problems for them, but just understanding that everyone has their own problems and are dealing with them in their own way, um, it can go a long way. Let's just put it like that. Last but not least, I want to emphasize this because I made a whole video about this like a year ago, and it's true after a year of, of uh, personal exploration in this area, but it's you are not a failure if you don't go into academia after your PhD. Definitely not. So many people I've met at my current job who have PhDs who are obviously not in academia, but are very successful, very inspiring, and are making just amazing contributions to science overall. And I think it's very hard to understand what this statement means if you have not really gone through the trials and tribulations of getting a PhD and deciding to not stay with it. But I think it was worth reiterating and saying, I can say from firsthand experience that you are not a failure if you don't go into academia. At least I don't consider myself a failure um, after my PhD and I don't think a lot of my peers do either. Who knows, but who cares, right? Ultimately it's what or how you see your own progression and I think if you are able to find something that gives you meaning and gives you uh, joy when you do it, then that's all you can really hope for right at the end of the day, right? And um, that was really my last lesson. So I know it wasn't that expansive. I just wanted to share some thoughts I had. I hope they were worth your time to, to watch and listen to. For now, I hope um, this is satisfactory and I will see you in the next video in the coming future and uh yeah i just hope you have a wonderful evening take care everyone